Hey everybody, Richard from Forsyth Video here, along with Coconut. There's a soldering iron over here that is not plugged in. Can't be plugged in while he's up here. Anyway, this is a First Act M, what, ME219. A three quarter size guitar that I bought for like $12 specifically because it's seafoam. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to make this a really cool, uh, nice playing instrument that even though it's three-quarter size, you might want to play. And this is the first of two three-quarter size guitars that I have to repair and work on and upgrade because uh, it's fun and I like doing silly things. This is going to be the cheaper one that we do, so all our parts are going to be relatively inexpensive. And I'll tell you where I got them. I'll tell you what they are and how much they cost. But uh, we're going to do some cool things to it, including reshaping the headstock, which is going to require repainting and all that kind of fun stuff too. But in this episode, we're going to work on the body. So if you look at this knob right here, that thing is already pretty jacked. Uh, this bridge sucks. This pickup sucks. We're going to go ahead and get rid of all that and replace all that. And uh, But first, I think we're going to try to get these stickers off after I clip the strings, which is Coconut's favorite thing. I've loosened the strings, and I'm not going to let him get hit. He's fine. I think I might go ahead and remove this bridge actually since it'll kind of be in the way. Coconut is going to be managing the strings over there while I do that. Alright, here's our bridge coming off. Nothing remarkable, just your standard uh, ground coming through the hole there. Metal bridge, simple as it gets. The one we're going to replace it with is simple and cheap, but not as uh, crappy as that. And <laughs> I guess we really have to replace that pot, huh? This just pulled the whole post right out of the pot, and that is incredible. Okay. <laughs> just right out of the pot. All right. I have a really awesome first act that was before they went to Walmart. It's a first act Sheena. Very cool guitar. Um, and that'll be the next uh, guitar. What am I talking about here? That'll be the next uh, guitar talk video, not guitar work. Okay, so now I am going to first see if I can just peel any of these guys off without too much trouble. It looks like they're all going to give me trouble. I'm going to apply some heat. Um, when you're using a heat gun, be careful. You don't want to go through the finish and cause it to bubble up. I actually, I'm on a seafoam kick, so I want to keep the seafoam, but coconut, you got to move if this gets too hot, buddy. Yeah, so all these are so old, they're just peeling apart, even with the heat. So I'm going to have to do some scraping. Okay, so all that, and I only managed to get one of them off cleanly, which was this guy here. I'm going to see if acetone will break up this paper, which uh, if you have a lacquer finish, do not use acetone if you have polyurethane or some other type of hard plastic finish it should be fine but uh, always test it on a uh, hard to see area on your guitar like in the neck pocket or something for instance let's see if this will help us break through and also you don't want to hurt your finish if you're trying to save it like I am so if you have something that's a softer plastic like guitar pick that works great. Um, I wouldn't recommend like a plastic paint scraper because those tend to have burrs on the edge that'll scratch your finish. Anytime I redo a cheap guitar, I inevitably get 300 comments about, Richard, it's not worth it. Why are you doing this to such a cheap guitar? You're wasting your money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're right, I am. Because I think this kind of thing is fun. And uh, I think if I was a more urban gentleman, I might call some of you haters. <laughs> I just enjoy it. I think it's cool to take something that most people consider useless and making it playable and interesting and fun. And this thing is going to be all of those things. And I'm on a big seafoam kick right now. 
Also, I'm pretty used to working with acetone. If you're not, you might want to wear gloves. Uh, it will definitely let you know if you have any cuts on your hands, that's for sure. All right, have I mentioned how much I just absolutely abhor paper-based stickers on guitars? If you're gonna sticker your guitar, use vinyl stickers if you want, ever wanna take them off. I mean, obviously, if you're just making a sticker bomb guitar and you don't care, it's no big deal. So, to get the residue, you wanna really saturate the area. Saturate, take a clean party paper towel and wipe. Saturate, take a clean part of your paper towel and wipe. And that's the fastest way I've found to get the residue off. Now we're still gonna have residue after this, but hopefully the whatever's left that we don't get with the acetone, the buffer or buffing should take off. One more note about acetone. If you have pickup rings or you have a pick guard, anything of ABS plastic, including binding, by the way, acetone will melt it. I don't really care about this. I'm still trying not to destroy the ring because I could use that one day, but just as a heads up here, I'll show you, watch. Yep, see that? I melt right through that stuff. Okay, the back is not too bad. Should also mention that the pickup jack I can replace that too, because I doubt that's any good. Ah, I love this. Just no room to get anything out. <laughs> it was double-sided taped in there. <laughs> Why? Oh my gosh. All right, let's take a look at this. Here's our uh, piddly little super broken pot right here. There's our input jack. There's our ground wire. They do their job to spreading the weight. Let's see if this is shimmed at all. No, nah, it does not appear to be shimmed. Okay, here's the neck. This is what we're gonna work on the second video. We're gonna find us a cool new shape for the headstock because this sucks. We're gonna paint it, put a new logo on it. Uh, we may replace the nut. We're trying to keep it cheap. I was going to refret it, but I think I'm gonna do that on the expensive guitar that we're gonna redo, the expensive baby guitar coming up next. This is just a bare bones, cheap as you can get pickup from China. Two lead humbucker. Not taking the strap button out because I don't need to. Yeah, it's not even, uh, not even labeled in any way, shape, or form. So I'm going to carve F, A, and then a B, R. So I know in the future, this was a first act bridge humbucker. I go over the parts we're gonna put on this guitar and then we're gonna clean up the workspace and do the rest. Okay, the bridge came from Amazon. Um, just look up guitar bridge. I mean, you're gonna find it. it. I've used these bridges in the past and it's usually really easy to locate them on center and have the same point where the strings cross but it's a hell of an upgrade because when you play on it you're not pushing directly on your saddle which can affect your tuning stability you're you've got this nice metal piece right here and like i said this was like 10 or 11 dollars something like that you'll notice it's string through i have some ferrules for the back of the guitar we're gonna drill through the body make our, our own string through uh set up there it's gonna be pretty cool so we got that going for us. As for tuners, which we're gonna put on in the next episode after we finish our bridge, these were like $22, I believe, and these were from, um, let's see, eBay. And I just searched locking tuners and I wanted to get the old school kind of clues and looking tuners because this guitar, when we recut the headstock, is gonna be more reminiscent of a Gibson, but they're also locking. So right here, we're like less than 40 bucks. We've got a nice comfortable bridge. And we've got locking, classy looking tuners. Now the pickup, that's the thing where you guys are going, well, if you're doing it cheap, how are you gonna have a good pickup? Well, there's three different places on the web that I know of to get quality, cheap pickups. My personal favorite is Guitar Madness. Search them on eBay. When I was but a wee lad, just learning guitar, I thought the Seymour Duncan Invaders were the best pickups ever. 
And that was before I ever used one. <laughs> so, I got an FHBK6 from Guitar Madness. It comes with a little wiring diagram and a coil tap diagram. And I think I have a coil tap pot around here. We may coil tap this. Yeah, we might, we might do that. Anyway, bridge humbucker. Very simple, just looks mean. We're keeping that chrome theme with this guitar. So we got our chrome this, we got our chrome tuner bags, we got our chrome bridge. It's gonna be pretty cool. Other than that, we just have our little inserts for our tuners. And that's really it. But guys, this pickup was 15 bucks maybe? So right here we're at like $55 and we're completely redoing the guitar for that. I cannot tell you guys, I've used this bridge, this exact cheap bridge on several guitars that I was redoing on the cheap just because it's so comfortable. I really like these. This I got because it has a high output and I want this to be like a heavy metal guitar. We're gonna put heavy strings on it. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, we've got our workplace cleaned up. So I wanna show you what I'm gonna use to get this front looking nice on this guitar. We have Meguiar's Ultra Cut Compound. We have fine cut cleaner and then swirl remover. They're all relatively light cut, but this is a pretty good, this is, this is really good for getting rid of like, uh, if you were to buff your guitar out, let's say this would get rid of the pick scratches in it. Like if you hit your guitar too hard, that's what we're gonna do. All right, this is our ultra cut compound we're starting with. And you can uh, spray a little water on here as well if you wanna lighten it up, make it go a little smoother for you. Um, I like to just use it as it is for the most part. To sat make sure you saturate the area you want to polish with it. You know, people ask me, hey Richard, what would uh what would you like a lifetime supply of in relation to guitar? And it's like they expect me to say, ah, oh, pickups or polyurethane or things like that, wiring. No, give me a lifetime supply of paper towels and tape. <laughs> I think I would save more money that way in the long run. <laughs> when you think you've got it all done, go over it one more time before you switch to the next compound. And guys, if this kind of thing bores you, let me know. I'm going to try to be making more, and I know a lot of people who watch my channel, you've seen me polish things, so if you don't want to see me polish things, let me know, and I won't do it anymore. But I. I think for uh, anybody who finds my channel, I like to include things like this so that they can figure out how to do it. I like to do big swirls. I like to go back and forth like this. Big swirls, back and forth. Just alternate the method. Try to get full coverage on everything. Okay, so I've done two rounds of the heavier cut stuff. And now we're going to switch to a cotton rag and do the finer cut. But you can see it's already starting to look a little bit better, but this had a pretty crappy finish. From the factory, I guarantee you they didn't seal the wood too well, so there's lots of checking and what will eventually turn into splitting if this guitar sits in a couple like, like let's say this was left in a warm environment and brought into a cold environment, this would these would totally split. So I that's why I kind of neglected to uh, get the buffer out because I think that would eat through the finish and all these little ridges that are there. But it's starting to look good. All the uh, residue is off and it is time to go to a finer cut. Okay, so I have coconut, it's kind of in the way, but we got it fairly shiny. Can use another wipe down though, but uh, got some of our scratches out. Got a lot just cleaner looking overall. All that residue's gone. What you just saw me doing was widening out our hole for our pot. I found a killer uh, coil tap pot, so hopefully we can hook that up. However, I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough room. The width of this body is a little thinner than a normal guitar. So let's see if this will fit. I've got it set to about where I want it to uh, clear. We might all, we might almost have it. It might almost be there. Hold on. Inevitably, 
if you switch your potentiometers out for a higher quality one, you're going to have to widen the hole because these cheap Chinese axes are all always the same when it comes to that for some reason. Okay, it's pretty tight, but I think we'll just be able to clear it. That's awesome. Something of note real quick. I was putting this uh, Guitar Madness bridge pickup in the ring and there was wax in the hole here and there's wax residue on the back of this so that means that uh, they actually wax potted this pickup which is cool this is only a $15 pickup I think from Guitar Madness and uh, that's what I like about this company is I'm sure they get their pickups and things from China like everybody else uh, who's in the cheaper pickup market and a lot of the expensive pickup market but um, it seems like they tend to take that extra little step for you so I think it's worth it. Guitar Madness is an American company but they're you know they gotta get their stuff from somewhere right but it's pretty cool just to see the wax knowing that at least this crazy high output humbucker has been wax potted so it should be less microphonic That just changes the whole look of it, doesn't it? I know a lot of people, like I said before, are like, Richard, why are you doing this? You're just wasting money. Yeah, but at the same time, not only is it fun, it means I end up having something that nobody else has. And uh, when you make it yourself, you get that little, little tinge of pride back in there, you know, when you put it together yourself. And it's going to be a lot of fun having a tiny little guitar that uh, shreds and I'm totally gonna play it at band practice to try and stop me okay so here's something kind of interesting that I just discovered so if we line up our bridges like this you can see the strings are going to cross over at just about the same point on all three or on all on both of these but on all the saddles so there's three holes that was holding this bridge down right here two in the front but three back here and if I move this over out of the way and I just slide this over top of the existing holes you probably can't see it on your side but those three holes center up perfectly letting me know this new bridge is lined aligned exactly where it is I don't even have to run two strings and line it up and set it it's it's good to go so I am pretty happy about that course I need to put my ground wire in so let me do that first don't forget your ground wire kids I love it when a plan comes together I'm telling you guys these bridges on Amazon maybe I'll link it below they work they do the job for sure okay so we've got our bridge on here now this is a string through broad string through body bridge which I like <clears throat> somewhere in the back of my mind I uh, feel like it adds more resonance when the strings go through the body and then over the bridge right so what we need to do is make sure that we line up all these holes just like this on the back side of the guitar which is damn near impossible if you drill straight through right so I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it <clears throat> but we need to set our set our points first so that our uh, drill bits don't go sliding around on us. Now a drill press would make it way easier, but I don't have one currently. So I have a certain way I like to do this. And it's all about getting that first hole as straight as you can. And take a little bit of painter's tape it's important when we do this that we don't flex this tape at all all right we don't want the tape to slide around so we're gonna pre put some of the holes in it now we need to try to drill one hole and only one as best as we can Will it be straight? I doubt it, but let's try. Before we move the tape, 
we want to take a tape measure measure from the outside edge here so not the inside curve but the outside edge right there and if you want take a piece of tape and mark about where it is that you're going to be measuring at so it's straight across so right there take our tape measure and go from that little edge this looks like string through body area is right at four and three quarters inches which is great so now we take our tape I'm going to peel it off carefully so we don't tear it and you have a template now so we want to go to the back here's our hole that we drilled and it's mainly for just reference it should be about <clears throat> four and three quarters inches from the absolute side it's actually pretty darn close it's just a little bit off so we're going to take our tape template put it over the hole but put it just a little bit that way because this hole is just a little bit off put that right there all right and then we want this side to be at four and three quarters inches where that bottom hole is and we're just about right there so now we can begin drilling from the back here and we should be able to line up all our ferrules nice and straight coconut loves tape measures and we should be able to line up our ferrules nice and straight and then from the underside of the bridge we'll come back in drill those and if we need to we can make those holes wider so that they line up with these and they should line up straight through and it won't look too uh, atrociously bad on the back should have all these set little X's that mark the spot we're going to drill most of the way through now but not all the way okay so those should look pretty alright now we need to come from this direction as straight as we can. Once again, a drill press, we could probably get this darn near perfect. That one we fell right in the hole, so that was really good. We have to try to come through all the way from the back on that one. All right, that one we basically went all the way through too. All right, so the one we had trouble with was the third one there. This one here. Yeah, we're all the way through. All right. That's pretty good. All right, there's a couple that aren't perfect. They should be close enough. All right, guys, this may be hard to see. I'm trying to shine a flashlight through here. We got them all lined up, except for this one's giving me a little trouble. So we're gonna go to the next larger size drill bit and see if that allows us to get these holes lined up perfectly now, or close enough. And so this one right here, that's the uh, the culprit, the A string. It's usually the G string. Okay, I can see through there now, so that's really good. We're going to see if we can fit this bit in here. Yes, we can. Yeah, we'll have, no, we'll have no trouble getting the string through there. So that's that's good. That's about the width of the uh, hole that I would like. Uh, we will get our ferrules. We'll figure out the depth, and then we'll recess those. I'm still waiting on them. But uh, for now, I'm going to do some more of these. And that's about all we need width-wise for our string tunnels. And remember, don't drill all the way through each consecutive bit. You only want to go about half <laughs> docking. I only want to go about halfway through. And if I'm bumping the camera, sorry, I just wanted to try to make sure you guys could see what I'm doing here. 
Okay, I know many of you guys out there are wizened old guitar electric dudes, right? But a lot of our people watching this video are not, so let's talk about what a coil tab does. Basically, whenever you tap this, which is when you pull it out, that flips the switch, that shorts the uh, center taps of the one of the coils to ground so that you only have one active coil. So it's not complicated. It's just, you have to think about it a little bit. So, if we treat this like this, if we treat this section like a regular pot potentiometer, and then we treat this section like a dip switch, it becomes a little easier to understand. So this is going to be our ground lug, just like it would normally be. This is going to be our out, our hot out to the uh, jack. And this is going to be our hot in, so that the wiper in here controls the level of the volume of the guitar. The only thing we're hooking up on the switch are these two lugs, because we want it to be active when it's in the up position, so that it is shorting that to ground, right? So, I believe on this pickup, that means we need to take our white and red to the center, and then we need to ground this lug off which this is our ground, but we're not necessarily going to ground that there. But we'll just ground it, we can ground it to the pot, and then when we ground the shielding to the output, uh, or to the jack in the body ground, that will short it to that. Because we want to have all our grounds basically together if we can. Though I'm probably just going to hook. Okay, and uh, here's our jack, and this is the one that came out of the guitar. Uh, after inspecting it, it looks like it's really never been used, which is not a shock, right? People buy these first acts and don't really commit to them, but it's in good enough shape. We're going to reuse it. I thought I was going to go for a stereo jack. Maybe I will one day, but this is good enough for now. So basically, this is going to be my hot lead out right here. This is going to be my hot lead out, so it's going to come out right there. This is going to be my ground. It's going to be right there, okay? Let me get rid of the cat so he doesn't burn himself, and then we will... <laughs> get this thing going all right so first thing you need to do is tin your leads man this soldering iron is dirty That's really all we need there. That's our ground wire. This is our actual tap right here. Okay, our hot lead in needs to get to this other side, right here, for whatever reason, green is the hot lead in, which I think is the same as Seymour Duncan, or older Seymour Duncan, anyway. Take our hot lead out here. Remember that's ground. And this is ground, but we're going to put that on the bottom of the pot. And actually we need to do that now. So let's uh, arrange it so that we can work on that. Okay, I'm working very close to my camera lens because I want to try to get it so that you guys can see what I'm doing. This is the back of our pot. I've scratched up where I want to put the solder down. Okay. 
Gotta let it warm up until it flows onto the pot. I think that's sticking pretty well now. Okay, we don't have a lot to connect here, which is good. Because that's going to be right up against that plastic. So I'm going to put my ground wire here. You can think about it ahead of time too. If you're working on an instrument in the future, you're probably least likely to change this ground wire. You will want to mess with your pickups and your jacks, so I like to go in order. So next I would probably want to change a pickup would be the next thing that would probably... Uh, or the second least likely thing I would change. The most likely thing I would change would be the jack, so I'm gonna put that on top. Make sense? I'm also probably going to have to uh, insulate the wire for this ground here because it's not insulated and I don't want to touch in the dip switch. All right, then our ground for the output jack input jack whatever yeah, that's terrible just a little bit of fresh solder on the top we've got our star ground set up now we need to take our switch back out so we can put our jack back in Alright, once I make sure everything is in a good position, I will tighten that down. And we're going to take our potentiometer very carefully, try to organize it to where nothing's touching. That looks good, actually. If I can keep that over there, that'd be great. I think I'll have just enough room to get all these wires where they go. Let's put the nut on this side of our pot, hold it in place. We could have trimmed that to make it a little better, but I like to have room to work. And uh, I think we're good there, guys. Yeah, everything fits. That is awesome. It should be wired up correctly. If it's not, then uh, I'll just hate my life later. <laughs> Tomorrow my ferrule should be here so we can get going on that and finish that up. Keeping this one simple and clean, I happen to have a steel knurled knob. You can uh, squeeze these together a little bit to make it a little easier. Because the last thing you want to do is push through the pot. All right, there we go. Let me drill this out a little bit. This uh, pot out a little, uh, this knob out just a bit so that we go down a little farther. But there we go. That's our coil tap. On my break from lunch, but uh, I got excited because my ferrules came in. So before I run to work, I'm going to install one of these. So basically, you want a drill bit that is smaller than the ferrule, but about the size of the collar there. And you don't want to drill much farther than the ferrule, so that's why I have this marked off right there. Let's see if we can get one going. If you go backwards first, It helps to get rid of the paint so you don't chip it too much and it helps to center the bit. Alright, but that's the gist right there. I'm going to be real careful doing that one and then I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these in taped up my hammer they're not absolutely perfect with the drill press I think I could have done a better job but uh, they're not bad they'll work you can see what I'm uh, talking about here guys there's a little chip out on that one and they're not perfectly straight but uh, it's a modified first act so I'm not going to be too mad about it from a distance, it looks okay. Okay guys, quick review and then we're out of here. This is what we're dealing with now. Looking pretty decent. We're all buffed up on the top. We got our input jack back in. We got our coil tap in, of course. We got our awesome pickup in place. We got a much more comfortable bridge, which will hopefully increase the sustain because we have our string through body now. 
I'm pretty excited and I have a neck to work on. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. I'll see you next time. Bye.